After a quick lunch break on the ship, we embarked on a two-hour bus ride to the Temple of Seti I, also known as the Great Temple of Abydos. It's constructed from sandstone and dated to the 19th dynasty, having been started by Seti I and then completed by Ramses II, who also built a lesser temple of his own right next to it. Old maps show that this temple once had a pylon and enclosure walls, but very little remain. If this is what's left of the pylon, it's in rough shape. All of this block work looks like modern restoration or recreation, going as far as emulating the top cove in B detail. I'm not sure if any part of these stair ramp combos are original, but they are very similar to those at the Hatshepsut Temple. The front facades of these two temples are also very similar. For layout, we have the first open court, second open court, first and second hypostyle halls, main chapels and an Osiris hall, then additional chapels within the southern wing. In the first open court, we find some wall remnants and what are labeled as absolution wells. These were bone dry and filled with sand, so I just had to embrace my sinful ways. This section caught my eye, as it has the same erosion characteristics as seen on the Dendera staircases. The spare parts bin was pretty sparse, predominantly random blocks and sections of columns. But this chunk of granite was intriguingly out of place. This hole isn't centered, and this one doesn't go all the way through the block. The circular trench looks like something I'd cut with a router on a trammel, but not in granite. If you have any ideas of what this might be, let me know. The second open court was pretty much gravel with a modern walkway running down the center. It was at this point that Shannon played the picture card, before I could start nerding out and disappear into the temple. Tom helped out and took a non-selfie head perspective photo. And that's Tom, my fellow man in black, except he went with shorts. I find very few old pictures of this location, but this one shows that the entrance roof and column tops were gone upon rediscovery. My assumption is quarrying for reuse, and I wonder why it stopped, as it appears that there's a lot of nice ceiling blocks left untouched. Once you see the old photo, the modern concrete repair is very obvious. The front facade also has a nice carving of Osiris, Ra, and Pharaoh, which still has traces of red, yellow, and blue pigments. The first hypostyle hall has two rows of columns, multi-piece and in the closed reed style. They are covered in low-relief carvings, including the common energetic symbol around the bases. The flooring is polygonal block, which shows extensive erosion. This is also the area which contains the supposed out-of-place artifacts. Believers in the paleocontact hypothesis say these depict a helicopter, a tank, a plane or glider, and a spaceship or blimp. The opposing belief is that it's just a case of recarving. An initial carving for Seti I, which is then filled in with plaster and recarved for Ramses II. Over time, some of the plaster erodes, leaving both inscriptions partially visible. Overlapping glyphs in which we see modern objects, the phenomena known as pareidolia. The second hypostyle hall is the same style as the first, but contains three rows of columns. Parts of the ceiling are covered in soot, and this broken support block has been repaired by tying it to the larger blocks above with threaded rod, washers, and nuts. Square nuts would be 1800s to early 1900s. The next area is seven chapels built for the worship of the pharaoh and principal deities. The king, Seti, Ptah, Raharakte, Amun, Osiris, which is the only chamber with access to the back area, Isis, and Horus. I didn't see any passage to this room, so that's interesting. Each chapel, aside from Osiris, has a false door, and each are unique. All of the chambers have an arched ceiling. They are carved in high relief and unpainted. I've read that the hieroglyphs in these chapels record rites and represent the first complete form known of the daily ritual. The priests wear lion skins. They like the paws attached and apparently wearing the tail in the front. The gods all have what looks like a tail, but we're told it represents grounding of the body to the earth. I need to research this. The back chamber is covered in painted high relief carvings. These panels show offerings being made to the pharaoh and the queen, and they are usually holding the Ankh in one hand and the Wa scepter in the other. Other panels depict pharaoh as Osiris. And these are modern repairs, just concrete packed into the voids. These panels show the Jed pillar. At each end of this hall are three small chambers, some of which have to be stepped up into. This one was in rough shape, with wall patching and ceiling anchors. At least two of them have a hieroglyph for Stargate next to their entrance. 
I don't remember where this is located in the temple, but anytime I see a blocked up doorway, I want to know what's behind it. This area is labeled as the Hall of Nefertem and Ptah Sokar. It has three columns with no top detail, two chambers at the back, and multiple wall niches. It also has this random slab of crown and bead detail just lying on the floor. The most unique detail of this temple is the Abydos King List, which is a list of 76 pharaohs of the principal dynasties recognized by Seti. It omits the names of many earlier pharaohs who are apparently considered illegitimate, such as Hyksos, Hatshepsut, Akhenaten, Smenkare, Tutankhamun, and Ai. This area was closed off with a metal gate, which of course made me want to know what was in there. Actually, most of the access to the southern wing was blocked off, but this is a picture of the ceiling in the area which was accessible. Lastly, we head up a corridor towards the rear exit. This hieroglyph of a winged man was specifically pointed out, notice he also has the grounding tail, and a view of the tunnel's roof blocks. These are large single-piece slabs with the arch cut into them, not multi-piece construction with the center keystone as we commonly see in Roman architecture. We also see that a few have cracked in the center and have been reinforced with threaded rod, nuts, washers, and a metal top plate. This tunnel leads to another structure, which will soon be open to the public, but during the time of our visit, it required special permissions. 